In this video, I'll be explaining how I use the Stream Deck and the Loop Deck together with Ecamm Live. Now, this isn't going to be a sort of head-to-head -head of the two devices. I am gonna be making that video separately. It is more of how I'm using them actually together because they have got unique uh, features, uh, both of them. And so using them together does actually give me that little bit of extra power and functionality that neither one of them on their own can uh, provide. However, in uh, sort of explaining this, I will be explaining some of the functionality of them and how I've set up multi-actions and things like that. So even if you are not an Ecamm Live user, then you will find something of interest in here uh, related to how to use the two devices. So uh, first of all, what are we exactly talking about? Well, it is this, my Franken deck, as somebody called it, a wise man, Rich. <laughs> um, but I did post this uh, picture or a picture of this on uh, various different social media platforms and I had quite a few questions of people asking exactly like how I'd done this, how I'd set it up and uh, you know how it was all mounted. Well it is quite simple really. It is essentially just a stream deck here at the bottom and it is just sitting on this base of an iPad stand and the iPad stand is then holding the, uh, the loop deck. Now the iPad stand is a Ulanzi, it's really heavyweight metal stand. It does a great job by the way of just holding in place an iPad. So if you're looking for a great iPad stand, I can definitely recommend this one. Uh, previously I was using this for holding my iPad when I was uh, writing, doing telestrating. So writing with my Apple Pencil on the iPad to then appear on the screen. Uh, I've got a video about that as well. I'll leave a link to that in the description. Um, but it is, yeah, just a really solid um, uh, uh, stand and so I'm just basically obviously positioning the loop deck so that it is at the same angle as the uh, the stream deck incidentally while we're on products I do just have to mention the cable that comes with the loop deck uh, it's a USB-C comes out of the top and normally would be just sort of sitting something like that sticking out at 90 degrees so then you've got this cable uh, which I find a little bit unsightly I'm not really a fan of the cables coming out at the top and then just doing this 90 degree turn is also not necessarily uh, as useful either so I wanted to uh, do something to just neaten up the appearance uh, and so I've got this uh, Ugreen uh, 180 degree USB-C cable so you can see how the connector is pointing down at the bottom of this little head uh, and then the cable is also pointing down at the bottom of that little head as well uh, and the effect of that is that uh, it basically looks a little bit neater at the top of the uh, of the device there so uh, that's just something I did to try and improve that a little bit um, so let me just come back uh, to you for a moment while I get this all set up and uh, I'll run through basically why I'm using these two devices because Anyone who is uh, familiar with the channel will know that I have been a Stream Deck user from the start really of the channel and I'm a big fan. I've got lots of videos and a whole playlist with uh, I think over 50 videos or something like that of just Stream Deck, uh, believe it or not. Is it 50 or 20? I don't know. It's a lot anyway. It's a lot. <laughs> so um, I have been using the Stream Deck uh, and with Ecamm Live I was always using uh, two pages. So I'd have this page for my videos uh, and then this page was more to do with live streaming. So I had some of my live streaming scenes, things like that. So an overlays and stuff that I pop up during my live stream were on this, uh, this second page. Um, but then there was stuff on the first page that I would use during live streaming and there was also stuff on the second page that I would use during filming. So uh, for example, the uh, all the ones for my little recommendations, if I was to press this button here, it would bring up my Ecamm Live recommendation. So uh, this video has been made with Ecamm Live as have all of my videos and live streams and it is a really great piece of live video production software that allows you to film live to tape or stream live to the internet um, and really just add a whole load of production value uh, that has been out of reach for the single person <laughs> for uh, some time now uh, and it's amazing what you can actually put together and just control it all with these devices so if you want to try Ecamm Live and uh, are not doing already then uh, go over to takeonetech.io slash Ecamm and get your free trial it's uh, really made this whole channel possible <laughs> I would be stuck somewhere in editing software having not actually made any steps forward if it weren't for Ecamm Live I highly recommend it <laughs> so that was just an example of one of those little actions that I've got in my uh, my stream deck and it is over on my second page so there in fact I was on a different page I went to reach down to press the button I pressed the wrong button because I wasn't sure which page it was on this whole thing of having two pages of uh, actions when you are trying to uh, record something or do a live stream 
was just getting a little bit of a, a pain. I ended a couple of live streams early because I pressed the wrong button. I meant to end a live stream and didn't because I also pressed the wrong button because I was on the wrong page. So it's nice just to have like one set of buttons and know that you are going to hit the right thing. So what I've been able to do with adding the loop deck is I have been able to basically add a whole load of the actions that were previously on my second page. So now I'm just using this one main page on Stream Deck, um, but then I'm also linking that in then with the actions that I've got on the loop deck up here. Um, and then also we've got some added functionality with the uh, uh, the dials that we've got on the loop deck as well. And you've also got these buttons along here. So. What I'm going to do is basically just go through uh, all of the uh, different things that I'm using this for, how I'm using it, and some of the little uh, shortcuts that I'm using in here as well in terms of multi-actions and things like that. So essentially down at the bottom, I've got my uh, my scenes. These are my main sort of scenes. So down here, I've got this one with a little person on it. In fact, it might be easier if I just actually swap over to uh, this view here. <laughs> and now you can actually see my stream deck on its own. So over here, I've got my my scene. So the way that I have my computer set up, in fact, if I just come into live demo mode, you'll actually see my whole monitor now. So my whole monitor is basically, uh, I have my Ecamm windows down at the bottom. I've then got my, uh, uh, these different areas of the screen. So this is quite a big screen, by the way. It's a 43 inch uh, Philips uh, t uh, uh, monitor. And so I've basically got different areas of the screen where I can place things. I can either place things over on this area here, uh, I've got this area in the top center, this one over on the uh, top right, uh, and then this area down on the uh, bottom uh, right as well. Uh, I could obviously use down here as well, but I tend to just keep that for if I've got any other windows or things like that that I need open that I'm uh, uh, that are not sort of relevant to the output, but I still need to have it visible if that's if you see what I mean. So maybe I want something that I can just drag it into place. So I keep this area empty as well, uh, and all my ecam stuff is just down here, tucked out of the way. So coming back to the main view, then um, what I've got with my uh, different uh, views is I've essentially got if I just come here one second, just turn that up a little bit. There we go. Um, I've got my uh, my different views here represented by these little images. So this is the uh, top left. This is the top center. This is the top right. And you can see that this is the active uh, scene at the moment because it is yellow as opposed to these others that are dark colored. Um, and then down here, we've got the bottom right. This one is for my top down camera and this one is for my main scene. Uh, and by the way, I denote all of these in this uh, sort of way with the, uh, the sort of border around them to indicate that they are scenes. This one is for when I'm sharing my iPad. So I do some stuff where I'm actually want to have a little dummy iPad on screen uh, and it's sharing the contents of that. These ones along here are all basically overlays. So this little, it, sort of icon <laughs> design with a sort of layer in the background and a layer in the foreground is to signify these are overlays. So for example, this one with the little thumbs up would be if I want to say, don't forget to like and subscribe. If you are enjoying my content, that is what that button does. Or maybe I want to just highlight my buy me a coffee and say, if you are enjoying this content, then don't forget to head over to buymeacoffee.com slash take one tech. So that is basically how I uh, trigger these uh, the different overlays. Uh, I've got this one as well, which is a little bit flashy. I don't tend to use it, but this is for my stinger. So if I wanted to do something like this, then that is how I'd do it. And that is just basically my little stinger overlay that uh, goes over the top. And uh, while that is happening over the top, I just switch over to my other view. So uh, that's how that one works. <laughs> now this one here is my little grid overlay. I did a video all about this, but basically I created a, uh, a grid and then I have this as an image overlay. Uh, and so if I toggle this one on now, you'll see that it brings up this grid in the background of the picture and allows me to align everything up. So now you can see how I cheated to actually make this scene in a matter of seconds uh, by just throwing up my picture and putting it up in this quadrant in the uh, top right cor corner and then aligning the uh, the sh a screen share window over to the left. And I could really just mess things up and move this around and you can see how you can use this to create all sorts of different uh, layouts. Uh, I will leave a link to the video I did about that because uh, you can actually get this uh, template as a free download from my website. Uh, so I'll leave a link to where you can get that from. You can download it, just add it as an image into Ecamm uh, and then you can use it to really just sort of make these scenes uh, and get all, them all well proportioned in a matter of moments. So uh, because I do make scenes on the fly, 
fly sometimes. That is why I have that as a specific uh, overlay button that I can just toggle it on and off. So by pressing this button, I can just toggle that on and off. So if I need to make any quick changes or adjust sizes of everything, anything, then I can just uh, easily do that. The next one along is for when I'm doing my telestration, so writing on the screen. Uh, this one basically is another overlay, but it just overlays the iPad, which I have set up with uh, a sort of green screen on it. Uh, so this one just overlays that on top of the screen uh, so that I can then uh, do my writing on the, uh, on the screen. I've done a video about this. There's got a lot of links to videos in this. This wasn't intentional, by the way. <laughs> I just happen to be mentioning things that I've talked about. So uh, that is what uh, those are for. Uh, I've then got two here which are just overlays with question marks and these are for when I'm doing these uh, demonstrations there's often something that I just need to throw up on the screen for the purposes of that particular video. I don't want to create a uh, uh, like a uh, an icon for it specifically uh, but ju just during the, uh, the course of the video I just need to toggle it on. So I would just in that case uh, come into here before the video and actually select what overlay it is that I want to show. Uh, maybe I've thrown an image on, maybe I'm talking about some result that I've had from this, that or the other, whatever it is. Uh, so these are basically just for ad hoc little overlays that I'm going to be using just for one video at a time. Uh, so I've always got these two that I can use there. Next one is uh, down here and this is for um, when I'm doing my uh, uh, my live streams or when I'm doing uh, other things where I want to have some graphics that are actually coming up onto the screen uh, and I'm doing that in Keynote um, but then using the green screen function to allow me to use all of Keynote's animation features to bring that over the top of Ecamm. So I have this one here to toggle on the, uh, the, the screen share of the um, keynote window um, and that means that then I can just make sure that I don't want it to trigger or come on when I'm not expecting it something like that so I just have this one here that basically toggles that screen sharing on um, and then these two here are forwards and backwards in my keynote presentation so that allows me to then put on my uh, keynote overlay uh, and then scroll back and forth through my uh, my slides so that they come into the presenter into the into Ecamm. <laughs> now next down here we've got um, some related to my pro mouse and uh, these are uh, what I'm using to actually zoom on the screen so in fact I'm actually pressing this one now to zoom in on the screen if I was to press this one it would spotlight the screen so you can see I've now spotlighted the screen or I can do the two together um, and this one is just to actually launch pro mouse in case I've inadvertently not had it launched <laughs> this one here is for my uh, timestamps. So I've done a video, once again, sorry, linked in the description. I've done a video about how you can actually create timestamps within um, uh, uh, Stream Deck. So there is a uh, piece of software, uh, sorry, a plugin, I should say. Uh, and if I come into my live, uh, start live broadcast, um, just sort of jumping around here, what you'll see is when I start my live broadcast, there's actually uh, for the uh, live stream, there's actually three actions in here. The first one is it goes to my countdown scene. The next one is it actually starts the live broadcast. Uh, and then the third one is it starts this timestamp log. And this is, uh, as I say, I've done a video all about this. Um, but this basically starts the uh, the timer and starts a new f text file uh, for my timestamp log. Uh, and then as I'm going through the, uh, the live stream, uh, every time I just press this button down here, the one with the clock on it, it's going to just add a new timestamp. And then all I have to do afterwards is just go through and just add in, you know, what was happening at those particular times. But it makes it easier with, you know, a two or three hour live stream to be able to grub through to exactly that point and make sure that I've got the uh, the title right or if it was something I needed to remember maybe if there was something that I needed to uh, uh, have a particular timestamp because I'm going to repurpose the content although I'll be honest I haven't got around to repurposing any content it always seems like too much hassle I'd rather just make a new video it seems quicker for me to remake the video than go out and uh, edit something and pull it out in an edit but anyway that's uh, that's another story um, so that is the uh, the timestamp. Uh, now up here we've also got this one which is uh, UI and what that does is that shows and hides the UI in Ecamm Live. So if I just uh, demonstrate that for a moment, in fact let me come down here 
so that you can see what I'm talking about. In fact, I'm in the wrong place. <laughs> Hang on, there we go. So if I uh, now share my screen, you can hopefully see my Ecamm Live interface. And as you can see, as I mouse over it, then you can actually see all of the controls, like we've got the pause, finish, play, all of these buttons. But if I use the uh, hide UI button, then it will hide those elements off the screen. So uh, that's the way that I've done that. Next along, we've uh, then got this one, which is for my uh, teleprompter. So I don't use notes on a teleprompter, but I do have a teleprompter set up and I'm now seeing the output from Ecamm Live. Uh, however, sometimes I do want to switch that off if there's something else that I want to show or something that I want to show on that screen. Uh, and so this one here is just my little icon to toggle that one on and off. Now, a lot of these are built in actions. So for example, the show and hide UI is a, uh, uh, an action that's built into Ecamm. So if we come into Ecamm Live uh, plugin, then you have got one in here that is to basically show and hide controls. There you go. Uh, and then we've got other ones like live demo mode and all that. So by the way, Ecamm Live, hats off to the, 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 the massive development team <laughs> of two um, because they've just got such a huge uh, amount of functions within Ecamm that can be triggered from Stream Deck. I mean, it's such a comprehensive uh, plugin. Um, but one that isn't ha doesn't happen to be in there is the one to basically toggle on the virtual monitor. So in this case, the way I'm doing it is I've actually um, I'm actually doing this using a keyboard maestro command. Uh, so uh, I'll leave a link to a video I did about how I set that up. But basically, with keyboard maestro, you can trigger menu commands in any application, even if they're running in the background. So I set up a macro in keyboard maestro to toggle the video monitor on and off in Ecamm, and then I'm triggering that with the Stream Deck, <laughs> if that makes sense. It's a bit of a chain of events there. Uh, with the Live, I've already touched on that one, how it basically does that chain of three events. Record is the same thing, uh, just recording rather than live streaming. Uh, and then this one here is my little uh, go around button, as in let's go, uh, let's go again, because the secret's out of the bag. Although this is take one tech, sometimes it's not actually until take two or take three because I often mess up the little video intro part where I'm telling you what I'm going to tell you. <laughs> That's the bit that never really uh, often flows or feels natural to me. Uh, once I get talking about something, I'm talking about something that I know about and I don't have any trouble. Um, but when I'm trying to tell you what I'm going to tell you, for some reason, it doesn't, it doesn't feel natural to me. So I often uh, screw up the first 10 seconds of the, uh, the video uh, and so this button here is basically my let's start again. <laughs> and what that does is it presses the uh, Ecamm go live button. And bear in mind that with Ecamm live with this plugin, you've got this button here that's called go live. Now, actually, if you are set to record, it will change its state and it will say record. If you are set to live stream, so the destination is set to YouTube or wherever, then it will say go live. But with either of those, once you've actually started the recording or the live stream, uh, then the button will change its name and it will say um, end or finish or something like that. So. Uh, Although this actually says go live, what this button really is in this instance is it is my uh, finish button. <laughs> it's gonna stop the recording. Then I've added a little bit of a delay because when you uh, stop a recording in Ecamm, uh, Ecamm will think about it for a moment or two and then it will have this little pop-up that comes up on the screen that says, do you wanna go and see where the file is? Do you want to upload it to YouTube? Or do you want to dismiss this uh, little dialogue box? So you normally have to, when you finish recording, you go and click on OK. Well, a little tip is that the Go Live button will also dismiss that little pop-up box. So um, what I've done here is basically one of these ends the broadcast. Then there's a little pause of, I think, around two seconds, something like that. Uh, and then it will dismiss that little pop-up that comes up uh, in uh, Ecamm. And that at that point, you're then ready to start recording again. So that's all that little uh, button does, is it just sets everything up, resets it, finishes recording, gets me ready to actually start recording again, and then I can press the record button. Now this one here used to trigger my uh, title sequence, but now I don't really have a title sequence. I've uh, cut that out because uh, nobody is on YouTube to watch my title sequence. They're there for whatever it is that I'm talking about, hopefully. Um, so this used to be a big long multi-action where it do lots of things like end my intro music, start my title sequence and all this sort of stuff. Uh, but now all it does is it just literally pops out 
my little lower third <laughs> like that. Uh, so that's all that that one is doing. So there we've covered most of the things that are on my uh, stream deck. So let's go and have a look now at uh, what is actually going on on the loop deck because I've got some other actions there that I've sort of copied over from the uh, page two of my stream deck. So now we are in the loop deck interface. And this is basically the uh, loop deck. So I've got these things which are just scenes. So these are for my uh, live stream scenes. So I have things such as this, my little two up when I've got two people. Uh, this isn't, they're not showing up now because I haven't got interview mode switched on. So a bit of a uh, poor example there. But anyway, that's what those are. Those are for all my different scenes. Uh, when I'm doing my live stream, I have things like this. So I have my little lower third that pops up. Uh, so I can toggle that one on and off and I'm just doing that with this particular uh, action just here this button um, then when I want people to uh, or ask people if they want to join the live stream they can always click on my link so I have a button for that one and then also uh, I'm currently working towards uh, 365 videos in my first year on YouTube so as part of my weekly live stream I always give my little update on that it's not normally covering my face but in any case uh, that's why I have that as a permanent fixture on my stream deck for my live streaming. Here you can see I've got my little uh, recommendations. I'll call them affiliate links, but they are my recommendations. Ecamm Live, TubeBuddy, uh, Setup and Epidemic. So these are for my little uh, things that I showed you earlier that uh, pop up. But the thing that is different about the, uh, the loop deck over the stream deck or one of the main standout features is these dials that you've got down the side. And uh, I should show you on the real thing really, shouldn't I? They, it is these dials. So you've got these uh, uh, three dials down this side and three dials down the other side as well. And you can turn them like this. Uh, but you can also push them in as well. So if I push that, then it will have another function. So there's two different things that each of these uh, these dials can do. They can either turn or they can be pushed in. Uh, and then we've also got these other buttons along the bottom as well. Now, uh, what I have had this uh, set up to do is, uh, if I come back over here and I'll take off my little live stream lower third, <laughs> um, the way that I have this set up is, um, once again, Ecamm Live have got their own plugin and uh, they are, again, one of the best in terms of the functionality. Uh, and there's certainly a lot more plugins for Stream Deck than there is for Loop Deck. I'll be covering that in that later video. Um, but uh, for Ecamm, they do have a lot of things in here. So uh, things related to comments, you can add and hide last comments. Uh, you can uh, control things like the uh, go live, uh, hide controls, live demo mode, all of the stuff that you can do on Stream Deck really you can do on here. Uh, previous scene, next scene, choose the scene, all that sort of stuff. Um, and then if you come down to this one, we've got input level. Now this is something that is different because um, with the loop deck, as I say, you've got some things that are basically touch commands or push commands that you're going to press a button uh, and they are signified by this little hand signal. Um, but then you've got these ones here, which have got this little rotation icon. And this signifies that it is something that can be controlled with those dials that we looked at. Uh, and what Ecamm have done is they have integrated uh, levels for audio uh, for, as you can see, guest one, guest two, guest three, guest four. Uh, there's also an, a global sort of interview mode uh, volume as well, if you just want to adjust those uh, as uh, all together. Um, you've then got mic. Um, so these are the, uh, the mute switches and the mic uh, mute switches. Um, but then you've also got the volume for movies, the primary mic, the secondary mic uh, for Skype, if you are using Skype. I'm not, I haven't spoken to someone on Skype in about eight years <laughs> and then you've also got the sound effects so what these are changing is basically the sliders that you will be familiar with in Ecamm so if I was to just uh, share my screen a minute and I'll share my Ecamm uh, interface uh, I think I'm sharing that now let me just check yeah I had to just check <laughs> it's these sliders here so what I'm able to do is if I want to adjust my mic I can just now I'm rotating the little dial on my uh, loop deck and you can see it is adjusting the volume of that or if I wanted to adjust the movie volume then I can adjust the volume of that on there as well so if you were wanting to do something like for example uh, fade in and out uh, maybe you are doing a podcast or, uh, or a live stream for that matter and you want to have music that's on and then have it just fade out as you come into the live stream or maybe you want to have music going and then duck it when you are talking about something similarly maybe it's a movie or video file and you want to duck the audio while you are talking uh, then you can actually do that with these dials 
The other thing that I like about it is it's not actually showing up on the uh, little window in front of me here, uh, but on the actual device. So here it just says what it is assigned to. So we've got the mic and the sound effects, uh, system audio, movie audio. That's actually my headphones. So that's just the sort of system sound coming into my headphones. So I can just adjust the audio levels on my uh, monitors. Uh, and then this one is the actual, um, in fact, this is screen record uh, zoom, but I'll come on to that in a moment. Um, so although it just says the uh, the particular thing that's being controlled there, if I come over to the device itself, um, I don't know if you can actually pick this up, but down here it does actually tell us the level that it's at. So this is mic is at 100. Not good to have it maxed out. <laughs> no no headroom there. Um, and then this one is 40 and 40 as well. So you do actually get that indication uh, on the device itself of uh, what the level is. And I thought that's a nice little feature there. So what else have I got on the uh, the loop deck? Well, these hardware keys down at the bottom, uh, these ones can be used to change. Uh, it's sort of like changing profiles or skip to different pages. I'm really only using one page, although I have got another page, which is basically some of my main uh, controls as well for my regular views and things like that. Uh, the reason being that sometimes I am going to be uh, on the road a little bit. And so uh, this would be a much more compact thing to take with me than the stream deck. So uh, I've set it up so that I could potentially use it to control everything as well. Hence, I've added in uh, all of the different controls as well. Uh, so then I do have some shortcuts here. The green ones basically signify that they are changing to either uh, a different uh, page or different uh, workspace on the stream deck. So that's what these green lights are. Uh, and then down here, I've got some that uh, have got some little programmed actions. So uh, this one is for uh, pause. So that is a built in action in the in, in Ecamm from uh, in, in the loop deck. So this one is when I need to uh, pause. So I do make my videos generally start to finish in one take, but occasionally, like I just did recently on a uh, series I was doing all about the shortcuts app, um, I wanted to just pause at some point so that I could put in a load of actions and save viewers sitting through all of that. So having a pause button is good. Um, and then this one over here is my end recording button, but I don't just have it programmed to be the uh, regular end button as in the, the built-in one. It is actually a multi-action of sorts. So I'll show you how I've built that out. So in Stream Deck, uh, we've got uh, a list of the uh, different actions here. So there's either the Ecamm Live actions, which we've been looking at. Uh, there's also ones related to the OS, uh, or there's some related here to the actual navigation within Stream Deck, it's, uh, oh, sorry, within Loop Deck itself. Uh, but you've also got this one here, which is custom actions. So this is where I've created some custom actions. And I created this custom action to end the recording. And what this does is it actually does uh, two things. <laughs> It first of all changes to my end scene because I have an end scene when uh, I finish my videos, which has got the, uh, you know, check out these videos next, that sort of thing. In fact, let me just switch to it now. I won't press the button because that will also end the, the video. <laughs> but my end screen, wherever it's gone, is somewhere in here, uh, this one. So I normally go over to that screen and then say, check out these videos. So when I want to uh, do my outro, I basically uh, press this button and it does two, uh, three things. First of all, it actually opens the, uh, that particular scene. So it switches to that scene rather in Ecamm. Then there's a delay of 20 seconds, which is the time that YouTube gives you uh, for your end, scene, uh, end screens to put on like any other videos or things like that that you want to link to. Uh, and then after 20 seconds, it uh, presses the go live button, which is of course, as we know, the also the end button if you happen to re be recording. So that means that when I'm ready to quit, I just press on that uh, one button number seven. It switches my scene starts counting down and then it will end the, uh, the the recording after 20 seconds. So that is one of the multi actions that I've added onto here. Uh, by the way, this is uh, just as easy as you would do with the Stream Deck. So if you want to add a particular action, you just literally can drag and drop this and just drag it wherever you happen to want it. Uh, you can go in and edit these. So obviously these ones, you can see what they are because they're actually on the buttons themselves. Um, but for example, these uh, little dials, all you do is you just click on them and you can see that you've got uh, a couple of things. You've got the rotation action, 
so that's telling you what's going to happen with that. Uh, and then you've also got the push action. So you can set these independently of each other, by the way. So you might want to have the rotation be the volume, but then you could have the push action be something completely unrelated if you wanted. Um, whereas I've just left these as they are. So basically that's my uh, headphones volume, uh, pushing it in is mute. This is movie volume and pushing to mute it and so on. So I have just left all of those. The one that is a bit different is this one. And this is the one that I'm using for screen zoom. Now, I've done a video all about this and I wasn't the one to discover this. Uh, much smarter people than me discovered this long before me and I was struggling trying to uh, show things on the screen without knowing about this. But this is basically an accessibility feature in the Mac. And if I come onto my, uh, my full screen, and in fact, I'll use this one, I'll show you here. Uh, this button here is what I use for my live demo mode. So if I press on that one, then you can now see my full screen. The thing about this, especially on a 50, a 43 inch monitor is this now to you probably looks uh, really quite small, even if you're looking on a regular monitor. Uh, and if you're watching on a mobile, uh, good luck. <laughs> so what it's handy to be able to do is to be able to actually zoom in. So I can actually still just zoom in on a particular part of the screen. Maybe I want to zoom in on this part of the screen. Uh, and the way that you do that is um, it is an accessibility feature that you have to enable, uh, but then you simply hold down the control key and then scroll the mouse wheel wheel uh, and you can then zoom in on any different part of the screen. Well the thing that I found with that is sometimes uh, it's uh, a little bit a little bit finicky to get it to do exactly what I want or go to the right place. Not always but it could have just been a bit smoother. So I figured considering I am doing this when I am uh, basically triggering live demo mode anyway, uh, what I've done is I've assigned this and created a little shortcut so that it will basically be assigned to this dial. So if I now use this button here to trigger live demo mode, but then I then twiddle this little knob just up in the left hand side, <laughs> I can now zoom with it and pushing in the uh, the button uh, or rather the, the knob, if I push that button, it will just jump to a predefined zoom. So what that means is I can actually just move my, uh, my mouse up to this top corner, for example, and then I just press that dial and it zoomed in on just the top corner because I usually do have things like I want to uh, maybe show what's going on in the menus or something like that, which is why I would want to do that. Or maybe I want to show up in the menu bar on this side what's going on. So then in that case, I would zoom into this corner. So having that as a preset zoom is something that I find really useful. Uh, but then you do still have the dial itself for that extra like fine grain if I need to just zoom in a little bit more. But also because it is a uh, you've got some distinct sort of clicks on the uh, the dials, then it means that uh, I can be a lot more sort of intentional about exactly uh, what part I'm zooming in on. Now there is a little little bit that uh, caught me out with that to begin with which is for this screen zoom because the way that you s zoom the screen is you hold down the control key uh, by the way when I say the way that you do this I should actually just quickly point out uh, rather than just sending you off to you know 20 other different videos <laughs> in fact let me bring this up where it might be a bit bigger uh, I've got a squeaky chair today, by the way. Uh, if I bring it over here, then uh, this is an accessibility feature. Uh, so if I come into accessibility uh, and it is this feature down here where it says zoom. So click on zoom and then it's this thing. So use scroll gesture with modifier key to zoom and the modifier key is control. You can actually change that. So basically, if I hold down the control key, uh, it will zoom the, uh, the screen. So I thought that the easiest way to do this would be to create a custom action in Loop Deck. And in fact, I'm just going to have to zoom out from this a little bit because uh, it's missing a little bit of the UI. I zoomed in so that it was easier to see. <laughs> um, but here is the bit that we are looking for. So uh, this is where we've got the custom actions. And so I've got this one for zoom screen. Uh, now, what I had initially done is um, I had you can actually assign these wheels to be, uh, the, sorry, the dials to be uh, related to the scroll wheel. So you could use them to sort of scroll back and forth on the screen and things like that. And so I thought that having them uh, replicate the behavior of the mouse scroll wheel and also add the modif modifier key uh, of control would allow me to zoom in and out. But unfortunately, that didn't work. Uh, I'm not quite sure why. I don't know if there was some issue with uh, it not recognizing the uh, the scroll wheel and the control together for this particular function or something like that. But in any case, that didn't work as, uh, as I had expected. So uh, what I did was instead in the accessibility, you can also zoom in with this key here, which is uh, uh, control, uh, sorry, command option and 
equals and command option and minus. So I thought, right, well, I'll, I'll map those keys then to the dials so that each little increment it's turning is sort of pressing that key. Um, and that didn't work straight off either. However, when I used the, uh, the plus and minus on the number key, uh, because that equals is actually uh, the plus <laughs> as well on a regular keyboard and the little dash is also the minus on a regular keyboard but you would have had to press shift to get those on the keyboard if this is making sense however on the uh, the number pad uh, you have actually got the plus and minus and that is what you're actually using to uh, to zoom in and out with so if I come back over to here uh, you can see how I've constructed this uh, little custom action so screen zoom is essentially uh, here we are the adjustment action one and what you can see is you've got two little things here that you're changing so you've got basically the anti-clockwise movement and the clockwise movement so here for the uh, anti-clockwise movement it is uh, the number pad minus key uh, and then the modifiers are command and option and then for the uh, clockwise motion it's command option and the number pad plus and then the modify key uh, and that is how I've got this little dial to then replicate that sort of zooming in and out uh, using the um, uh, accessibility feature. One other thing that I did as well was um, there is also this uh, feature in the uh, uh, accessibility so there's one other key here, one other shortcut you've got, which is to toggle the zoom. Uh, so command option eight will just toggle that zoom and it will just jump into a particular spot or jump out. Uh, but it also means that if you have zoomed in, then pressing that will just reset it as well. So that made sense to have that as the uh, the push, bu uh, push button uh, action on that dial as well. So I did just create another uh, custom action there which is this one here called reset zoom and all that is is that's basically just uh, that shortcut that we've just looked at command option eight so now when i'm in my live demo mode then i can just use my little dial to zoom in and out wherever i want to zoom into or i can just uh, actually just zoom into a specific spot by pressing the button in uh, or if i have zoomed in using the dial then if i just press the uh, dial in itself uh, then it will just uh, reset to uh, that view again so uh, that that is basically the actions that I've got. Incidentally, all of the uh, the icons that I've used on my Stream Deck, I have made them available as a download on my website as well, so you can get those from the store. I'll leave a link to that in the description. Uh, now, what I'll do is I'll leave a link to some of my other Stream Deck videos over on the right-hand side because I've got really quite a lot there about how to use Stream Deck, and there'll be more coming for Loot Deck very soon. So until the next video, have a great day.